It sounds really stupid. It sounds really stupid. But it would be like, don't worry, my man, everything's going to work out just fine. <laughs> I know that's kind of trite, but let me see. Oh. When you get married and you're not happy, don't stay married any longer. Stop at that point. That would be the best advice, because I was married the first time, I stayed two years longer than I should have. When I was married the second time, I stayed married uh, three years longer than I should have. And when I was married the third time, I stayed married seven years longer than I should have. So, that would be the best advice I could give my 20-year-old self. When you're unhappy, change something. Don't keep trying to make it better. Something's not working, who cares why, let's go on down the road. Because life is precious, all those wasted years, I'll never have them back. And that would be the best advice. Very difficult to walk away from somebody like Joanna, my third wife. I was so in love with her, it was ridiculous. Over the, over the top, down the other side, it was just wonderful. I just did not want to give that up. And eventually we had to give it up because she wasn't happy, I wasn't happy. We were making each other miserable. So. Uh, it would have been nice to save at least five of those seven years and go on down the road, but they're gone and there's nothing I can do but go from here. So that would be the best advice I could give anybody about anything. When you're not happy, change something. <laughs> you, don't, you don't like your roommate, move. You don't like the college you're in, get out. Uh, don't like the company you work for when you're young, get the fuck out. Don't go, don't go, don't quit. Go find another job and then quit. I mean, you read my office politics book, you never quit a job until you have another one. Okay, that's that's important. Now, is there any other good points um, that you tell? I, I love getting this uh, advice because there isn't any times I meet such a cool seventy-year-old guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was cool when I was twenty, but I'm really cool at seventy. <laughs> that's cute. I'm trying to get this. Uh, I appreciate it. It's like a very nice compliment. I, I didn't mean to make light of it. Uh, what would I like to tell, how old are you? 24. 24. The best thing you can do is not get married till you're 34, no matter what. And uh, uh, Violet is the girl I'm talking about, the 23-year-old. She's telling me one day at lunch. Um, my girlfriends all complain about not enough sex in their lives. And I said, really? How old are their boyfriends? And she said, oh. 25, 6, 7. I said, are they married? She said, no. I said, they live together. She said, oh yeah. And I said, how long have they been living together? Well, since high school. And that's the problem. And I said, that's the problem. And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, I don't know what happens, but I can guarantee you that when you live together, the lust disappears. And um, I don't know why it does that. It just does that. I think familiarity is not nearly as exciting as somebody you haven't seen for a couple of days. So, um, you can live together, but uh, I would really, I'm not approved. I mean, Jesus Christ, I live with every woman I ever married, and I live with a couple of women I didn't marry, but I don't have any trouble with that moral point. I'm just saying that if you want to keep the lust alive, um, that's how you do it. You, you don't get up and you don't fart in the same bed as her and you don't sit at the breakfast table and read the paper with her. You you are glad to see her when she gets here and you're glad to go over there when you go over there and you go away together and it's just wonderful. But a lot of women don't want to put up with that. They want to know where is this going? When are we going to get married? When are we going to live together? And they're pushing toward the goal line and it's very difficult. I mean, Val and I already know gonna, we're not going to live together, period. Not going to happen. Because of that conversation, plus I would never do it again anyway, because I know what happened every other time. It just kills the lust, and I like the lust. Lust is my favorite emotion. I'm not kidding. I like it better than love. Lust, lust is uh, like why we're here. It's like sex is life, life is sex, and uh, you don't want that to go away if you can possibly help it. And if you have to artificially keep it from going away by not living together, that's fine. I mean, we'll, we go away for two days, three days, but we don't go away for weeks. That's not in the, in the books yet. Someday maybe we'll go to Hawaii for a couple of weeks. I don't know. But that's um, the best tip I can give you at 24. 
Uh, nothing wrong with being engaged, um, but the other thing I can tell you that's in my book, Office Politics, is you should have as much money as you can get your hands on before you're 30. And in your case, by the time you're 34, if you start now and um, follow the instructions in office politics, you should have plenty of money by the time you're 34. And then when you have money, you have options. And when you have options, you are able to choose from the, instead of choosing the lesser of two evils, you're able to choose between which one of these two is the best choices. So money isn't an answer, but money is uh, very important in giving you freedom and options. You don't need a gazillion bucks, but you need to be comfortable and you need to have a cushion uh, so that you're, you're relaxed about money problems and you're not getting too excited about it. So when you're young, you should make as much money as you can, put it away and sit on it, which I did. I got very good advice from my parents who were both from the Depression and um, money, money is your friend. It's not the be all end all, but it is, you need a lot of it. But you don't need to have Rolls Royce and all that stuff. You need to have a comfortable place to live, quiet place to live, peaceful place to live, good music, good clothes, and a, and a reliable car. Beyond that, you don't need much. You don't, don't, like when I worked for Bechtel, my last year there, they paid me the equivalent of a house. That was my salary. <laughs> and I was miserable because I wasn't doing what I wanted to do, which was play, play volleyball and smoke dope and dance. <laughs> so I quit and I went to grad school and I got four wonderful years of volleyball, dope smoking and drinking and partying, which has never stopped by the way. <laughs> because I scale my standard of living down to I'm a lower middle class or upper lower class. Uh, I have a 93 Camry. I have a 27 inch regular TV. I have a computer that's my friends all laugh at it. It's a little toy computer of some kind with an atom. I don't know what that means. CPU. Uh, I just don't need all that stuff. I prefer spending my money on wild women and song. <laughs> I do. I do. I don't, I don't have an iPhone. I don't have a Droid. I have a Metro PCS. $40 a month unlimited text and talk. So. You make your choices and you take your chances. And that's my advice. It worked for me. Let's put it that way. Everybody's different, though. Yeah, it seems like you're just, keep, you're just keeping it simple and just doing what you want to do. That's yeah. That's what I advise everybody to do. Keep it simple. But you can't you can't be a hippie. You can't be living in a studio apartment when you're 40. You've got to have a nice place. You've got to have a nice car, nice clothes, nice music, and you've got to be able to take your places. We have a saying in my group. No money, K-N-O-W, money. No women, K-N-O-W, women. No money, N-O, no women, no women, N-O. <laughs> so no money and no women. Understand it, that's what works. Well, uh, unfortunately, we just ran out of time. Uh, oh, I enjoyed it. Uh, You've got plenty to work with here. I hope you make a good little piece or two, three pieces, whatever you want to cut it into. Uh, when you get it up, Send me the URL and I'll put it in my newsletter. You'll have thousands of people coming to your site. Great. Um, and uh, can you tell the listeners out there that want to know more about Doc Steele and uh, some of the books and products you have out there? Can you tell them? Sure. The best place to go is to steelballspress.com. And um, my, my webmaster and I have two websites, one that I like and one that he likes. He works on a percentage of the sales, so he likes his, <laughs> which is almost all words, and mine, which is almost all pictures and videos. So you can go to my website, stewballs.com, and if you scroll all the way to the bottom and click on full-blown website, that's where all the videos and the music and the pictures and some descriptions are. But if you, if you stay on the home page and you follow his choices, uh, he said, well, when guys come to your website, they want to answer to a problem. So he has a list of things that you can look up, how to do this, how to do that. And uh, he, he was right. The sales are much better with his version of the website. But if you want to see free videos and listen to a lot of my radio interviews, Tom Likas is the one they like the most. That's in the free audio. You can listen to a lot of that stuff free. 
Uh, if you want to buy my stuff, you can buy it right there. There's a lot of combination packages. If you go to books, there's all kinds of package deals. You can get everything for way discounted. But if you go to my uh, YouTube, Steel Balls Press, all one word, um, you'll see a lot of video from my workshops, um, especially the recent ones. Uh, they're the best. And uh, you'll, let me put it this way, one of my friends, who is now my friend, used to be one of my guys. He since graduated, has a real life, makes a lot of money, has a great girlfriend. He said, learning to do this uh, conversation and body language by CRT is like trying to learn how to play piano by correspondence course. Go to the workshops. So, if you like the books and you like the videos, come to the workshop. We're having one in October 1, 2, and 3 of this year. And the day before that, I take men out and dress them in a suit. And then I teach them how to change it from a power suit to a date suit. And uh, I do all the tailoring. I pick out all the clothes for you. You look like a million bucks. Because I was taught all this by my father. And it served me well at Bechtel and all the other big companies I worked in. I know how to wear a power suit. I know all the details, and I'm glad to share it with you. So thank you for giving me a little chance to pitch my stuff there. And I will see you uh, someday. Hopefully you'll be in a workshop. If you're, if you're interested, you're certainly welcome to come to this workshop free. Uh, but let's keep that between you and me. Yeah, that'll be on uh, It's about 3000 bucks. Uh, but you're certainly welcome for free because anybody in the media is welcome to come for free because you're the guy that can get me more known and the more known I am, the better my chances are. Great. Well, uh, thank you again uh, for sitting down and talking with me today. Like I said, it's, uh... I enjoyed every bit of it. You make me think sometimes. I don't usually think about this stuff, but you said, me, he give me the three bullet points and what would you tell the 20-year-old Don Steele? I really like that one. And I hope everybody can learn from my mistakes. When you're unhappy, get out. <laughs> Go. All right. Exactly. Thank you, Tony. All right. Well, thank you so much, and uh, we'll, we'll be in contact definitely in the future. Okie doke. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.